Hello, church. Well, here we are in a much anticipated book. I'm sure many people have been wondering how are Pastor Delan and Pastor Kevin going to handle this one? And we're going to have a great time going through this book. I actually think this is going to be amazing and, and great to see what God all has to say. This is a book that's often avoided because it's awkward. We don't know how to approach it. Friends, we are going to see some amazing things in this book about what God has to say about relationships. Uh, we are going to focus specifically as we go through this more on the physical side of things in terms of relating what we see here to relationships between men and women. Although you can easily see parallels between Jesus and the church in this book as well, which we will touch on a bit. But we're going to focus a bit on that as we go through here. Join me as we look at this. Chapter one, here we are looking at what we'll call the beginning of the dating relationship. And there is already some super advice straight out of the gate here. Look at verse three. The beloved in this case is the woman. She is the, the female in the relationship. The lover, which we will find out later, is the man. So here we are, the beloved is saying, your name is like perfume poured out. Women, what are you looking for in a man? What kind of qualities are you looking for? I would suggest to you that one of the most important things to look for is to look for a man with a good name. If he does not have a name that represents integrity and respect and honor, take his name off the list of consideration. You need to look for a guy who is going to present himself as one who has a good name. Then if you look later on, we, we look down here at the, at the beloved again in verses five to seven. And here we are, guys, Here's a good one for us to look for in a girl. Look what she is. She's saying that she is dark yet lovely, but she has neglected her own vineyard, which means her own body, because she has been submitting to her brothers by working hard in what they have told her to do. Guys, what are you looking for in a girl? Outer beauty or inner beauty? In this day, being dark was not a desirable feature. It was not nice to be tanned. They desired white skin. And so she is essentially saying, I've got a dark complexion and not lovely in the eyes of the world, but I have inner beauty, which I am desiring my future man to see. Guys, look for a woman of inner beauty, not just outer beauty. Then we go through the chapter and they're starting to get to know one another better. Verse 17, they're off on a picnic and uh, they're having a great time. Chapter two, so here we go. Now they're starting to get a little bit more intense with one another and they're starting to express their love for one another and it's great. And as they get through here, they're starting to get a little bit passionate with each other and recognize we've got to draw some lines here. Verse six in chapter two, things are getting a little bit steamy. So in chapter seven, don't arouse or awaken love until it desires. Friends, when we are in the dating relationship, we've got to recognize we've got to have a plan for purity is what I like to call it. We have got to have some parameters which we will not cross and have accountability partners that will hold us to those plans so that we can get to the wedding day with, with sexual purity. Just absolutely critical. And these people recognize this in this passage. They say, oh, things are getting a little hot. Nope, we're going to stop right here. We are not crossing that line. Then if you jump down to verse 14, he said, this is the man talking now. He says, my dove is in the clefts of the rock. Friends, a dove is a very flighty bird that does not come out of a place of perceived safety easily. And so he's going to now try and woo her out of this place so that she feels safe and secure with him. Guys, are you creating a safe, secure place for your girl? Does she feel like she wants to be with you because you make her feel like she will be protected? Or do you say or do things that hurt and cut? Very important that he recognizes I need to do those things which are going to make my girl feel safe and secure. And then he takes the lead in verse 15 of catching foxes. What does he mean by that? Foxes in these days would actually be vineyard destroyers because they would come along when all the blooms were out and they would eat the blooms and the blooms represented the fruit that would not then be born in the vineyard because the bloom was gone. What is he saying? The guy is taking the lead in recognizing relationship killers. He is taking the lead in keeping things like cutting words, careless sexual promiscuity, those types of things. And he is saying, we're not having that in our relationship. And so guys, are you taking the lead in that? Or are you expecting your girl to take the lead in that? This passage makes it clear, guys, we are to take the lead in identifying and eliminating relationship killers. So do that. And then I love verse 17. Now the girl's talking again and she feels so wonderful with her guy that she wants to be with him, except she says, 
it's nighttime, you better get out of here or we're going to get in trouble. She essentially says, until the day returns, you got to leave. And so I love it. They're back to their plan of purity and they're keeping in those parameters. All right. So, so here's a great question that we can ask ourselves today. Lord, if you're dating, I'm, tell, I'm talking, this is more for dating, but even in married couples, we can ask this question. Lord, who takes the lead in my relationship to purity? The man or the woman? Men, pray that you will do that. Women, pray for your men. Awesome. Chapter three, in closing, we're going to look at, so in the beginning of the chapter here, the girl just can't stand being alone anymore, wants to find her man so that she can bring him home to get the blessing of betrothal, in, in other words, engagement. And so now in verse, in verse four, you can see that. She again says, don't arouse her awake in love. And then we're going to come down to verse 11. And here we have the wedding days here. And what we can see is they have gotten the blessing of betrothal kind of in verses 1 through 5. And now in verse 6, the man is returning. And what we want to see here very simply is the, is the picture that John 14 presents us about Jesus. In the, in the culture of the day, the man would get betrothed to the woman, go off and prepare a home for them to live in. And once that was ready, he would come back and pick her up and they'd get married. Friends, that is the same picture that we have in John chapter 14, where Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And when it is ready, I'm coming back to get you. And so friends, we need to wait with expectancy and anticipation for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we'll close with this question. Lord, how am I waiting for the return of Jesus with expectancy and anticipation or complacency? Ah, friends, have a great day appreciating and loving Jesus and be a blessing.